something. God wants them to work in harmony. So the mind of God for number one and number two is that uh, we must pray for them to work in harmony. Not that they are not working in harmony, but we must pray that they continue into the future to work in harmony. Why? Because there are going to be attempts to drive a wedge between the two of them. So the attempts will arise before the end of this year to drive a wedge between them. <clears throat> Some of these attempts, there will be stories which will be circulating in the meeting, which have got no basis in fact. Hallelujah. So it's the duty of number one and number two to, to make sure that they continue to be united that they consult one another and continue to be what? To be united. I saw in the spirit that when number one and number two continue in an attitude of unit, God will release a lot of prosperity upon the, the country which they are leading. Hallelujah. And then for one of these, number one and number two, the spirit of God says that uh, I must tell the intercessors to pray for them to have grace to resist the temptation to abuse the powers of the state to revenge against perceived enemies or opponents. The Spirit of God says the duration of their stay on top of the mountain will depend on their ability to forgive and to demonstrate divine love. On their ability to forgive and to demonstrate divine love. And forgiveness and love, the divine way, it even loves those who may be different from us and those who may be of a faith which is different from our faith. There are many people in our world who are of a different faith from our faith. So I felt that the Spirit of God is prompting me to read for number one and number two, as well as the intercessors. Matthew chapter 5, from verse 43 to verse 48. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So the Bible says, as Christians, we must love. Love to the extent of loving even those who hate us. So there will be very serious temptation and pressure to revenge from those who are under number one and number two. But Romans chapter 12, verse 19 says, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath or anger. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So now that number one and number two are carrying the sword, we must pray for God to enlarge their hearts so that they won't use the sword to revenge, but rather they will use the sword to instill justice and discipline. The sword of authority is for justice and discipline, not to revenge or settle scores. I want us to confess and say the sword is for instilling justice and discipline, not revenge or settling of scores. Say the sword is for instilling justice and discipline in a nation not for settling scores, 
against perceived opponents. Our scripture to cover that point that we have been confessing is Romans chapter 13 from verse 1 to 7. It's true, those who exercise authority among us, they are carrying a sword. But the sword is for instilling justice and discipline, not to, to deal with bitterness. You, you don't use a sword that court has given you to relieve bitterness. The relief for bitterness is to love your enemies and to love those who have abused you in the past. That's the mind of God. That's the message of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 12, verse 17, says, Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. So it's true that number one and number two experienced a lot of abuse at the hands of those who were more powerful than them. But God sovereignly dispossessed those who were abusing them, the sword which was being abused. So lest they fall into the same hand of the Almighty God of being dispossessed the sword, the Spirit of God requires them to use the sword with temperance. To use the sword with what? Temperance. To use the sword with what? Temperance. Hallelujah. 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 Because I realized that God wants to really bless this number one and number two, but the blessing can be short-seconded by people who want to revenge under them. He wants to give them a longer reign, but God is watching them. Say, God is watching them. Yes, so at the end of the appropriation, say at the end of the appropriation, God is going to evaluate them. It's not, a, it's not their people who will evaluate them. It's God who will evaluate them, how they were using the sword. If they were using the sword to settle scores, their, their reign will be evaluated by God himself, not human beings. And then God will decide whether to send an angel to take the sword and give it to someone else, or for them to continue after the profession with the sword. So the pressure will be too much very soon for them to use the sword to revenge. But the sword is not for vengeance. The anger of man does not work out the righteousness of God. I want us to say the anger of man does not work out the righteousness of God. Say the anger of man does not work out the righteousness of God. <clears throat> In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, so we must pray for number one and number two. They are there in East Africa. If you don't know who number one and number two are, just pray, God will show you who number one and number two. It's a prophecy about number one and number two. It's an East African prophecy, or an East African prophecy. Number one and number two, East African prophecy. Number one, and two, or numbers one and two, or number one and number two, call on East African prophets. So the owners of this message, they are hearing me. The people who are the intended audience of this message, they are hearing me. So God wants them to use the sword creative to, to even be a blessing to their enemies. Pray. Hallelujah. Because according to the mind of God, for number two, there is a dream that God shot the wife of number two. That dream is not wishful thinking. The dream was a revelation of the mind of God about the future of number two. About the future of whom? Number two. So, 
everything will depend on the, the divine appraisal of God at the end of the appropriation. So right now, after getting the sword from God, they are undergoing probation. God and these angels are recording whatever is taking place. 